Hello, I am uh, Bick Lee, uh, Chief Architect at Platform 9, and today I want to tell you about how we built an OpenStack private cloud product that also happens to be offered as a SaaS solution, which is a little intriguing, and I'll get to that. So to set the stage, I first want to introduce you to what Platform 9 Managed OpenStack is, and in particular, the user experience that we want to give to our customers. We're going to dive into the architecture that enables this interesting deployment model. And then I'll talk about some of the technical challenges that we faced and how we solved those problems. OK, so let's just dive in. So our mission at Platform 9 is to make it very easy for a customer to set up a new private cloud. And let me walk you through the user experience. The user first goes to our web portal and signs up for a new account. Now, as soon as we detect that, we create a dedicated, highly available OpenStack cloud controller for that user and we host it either in our data center or somewhere in the cloud. But either way, it's accessible through the internet. That is why we say that we offer the OpenStack cloud controller as a service or a SaaS model. And we run it, operate it, maintain it, troubleshoot it, and uh, back it up for the customer, all of that as part of our product offering. Now, of course, in order to build a real cloud, the customer also needs to add real managed resources from their data center, such as compute, storage, and networks. In order to do this, the customer logs on to their SaaS UI, goes to the downloads page, and then downloads um, an agent package if they're using Linux hypervisors in their data center, or maybe a virtual appliance if they are a VMware customer. For every server that the user wants to add to their private cloud, they'll install this agent. And it's completely zero configuration. What that means is as soon as it's installed, the agent will automatically start and connect through the internet to the controller. When the controller detects this, the user is going to see that host just surface up in the UI, awaiting authorization. Now, when a user authorizes a host, what he's saying is he knows that this host belongs to him and wants to establish a secure connection between that server and the cloud controller. At this time, the user also specifies one or more roles for the host. Now, what a role does is it tells the controller what that server is going to be used for. Um, for example, is it a compute node for Nova or maybe a block storage node for Cinder? Anyway, once that information is collected, the private cloud is now ready to be consumed through this uh, SaaS-based management UI. So this is really the great customer experience that we want to provide to our customers. Now, what I want to do is kind of deep dive into more of the technical aspect and discuss what is the architecture that enables us to provide this split model of deployment. And luckily, we take advantage of OpenStack because it's already designed with a decoupled um, distributed architecture. So in this diagram, in the upper half, you'll see the cloud controller that we manage on behalf of the user. And on the bottom half are all the elements that run in the customer's data center behind a firewall. Now, it is our goal to run as many of those OpenStack services as possible in the controller so that we can manage them for the user. Uh, things like uh, troubleshooting, um, backup of the database, and upgrades. But as you know, OpenStack also has these things called agents, which I colored in red, and those need to run close to the bare metal. In other words, on the host or resources that are being managed. So based on the selection of roles, the Platform 9 host agent will download the correct software, install it, and configure it, and enable it to communicate with its peers in the controller. Now, 
This is a good opportunity to talk about the first technical challenge that we ran into, right? the communications aspect. As you know, OpenStack components communicate with each other using a variety of mechanisms and network protocols. For example, they'll make REST API calls. They'll send each other messages over the AMQP bus. And sometimes they may even make a um, connection to the MySQL database. And all of this is fine in plain vanilla OpenStack. But unfortunately, remember that part of the pieces of our uh, architecture run in the customer's data center. And typically there, the network policies of the customer are a lot stricter. So for example, most customers only allow outgoing internet connections, not incoming. Many of them will restrict your traffic to just web traffic and nothing else. Some will even force that traffic to go through a proxy. And some may even use advanced firewalls or uh, intrusion detection systems that look at the packet traffic and make sure that it complies to well-known protocols like SSL. So how do we solve this problem? What we did is, is we took all of those communications channels and wrapped them around HTTPS. Okay? And we take advantage of technologies that are web-based, such as WebSockets, to solve this problem. And by doing this, we can comply with customers' um, policies around network access. Another challenge I want to talk about is Glance. Now, most of you know that Glance is OpenStack's image service. And in particular, there's a service called Glance API that in addition to um, metadata operations, it also allows a client to upload images and download images by sending just plain HTTP requests, like put or get. So imagine a customer uh, behind his firewall in the data center using a tool like uh, Glance CLI and trying to upload an image to Glance, right? The good news is it's just going to work because it's just a plain HTTP request. However, there are two problems. First of one is uh, just efficiency and performance. You don't want to transfer large amounts of data over the WAN, right? That's just wasteful. But more seriously, this is private data we're talking about, thing that sh things that should not be leaving the data center. So. We tried to solve this problem by defining a new role for a server host. And we call that the image library. Once the customer has set up an image library host, what we do is we run the Glance API service not on the controller anymore, but on that host. We also reconfigure Keystone to advertise a local endpoint for the Glance API service. This way, the next time a client connects to Glance API, it will take the local route, and images will end up being stored locally, which is good for security and also performance. OK, lastly, I want to talk about another uh, challenge that we ran into, and that is integration with customer networks. If you've built an OpenStack cloud before, usually um, people tend to dedicate new resources like compute, storage, and especially networks to this new cloud. But what we found is many of our customers, they want their Nova instances to just plug into an existing physical network that is already defined with a Linux bridge, right? And they want instances to coexist with existing machines on the network, whether they're virtual or physical. And that network may be managed by an existing DHCP server. So in order to satisfy this use case, what we did is we enhanced Nova networking to allow a network to plug directly into an existing Linux bridge. And moreover, we allow the user to define settings for the network, and in particular, a sub-range within that network that Nova can then use as an IP pool from which to allocate IP addresses for instances. So with the solution, instances that are deployed can now communicate and coexist with existing machines. So in summary, um, 
Deploying, running, upgrading OpenStack is hard. And through our product, we try to completely simplify the experience. Uh, I hope to have given you a good overview and also the architecture and some of the technical challenges that we ran into. For more information, I invite you to visit our webpage. Thank you very much.